Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be reviewing the TP-Link HS110 which is a smart Wi-Fi socket and if you stay tuned to the end I will show you how you can get this little beauty um, and use it in cooperation with a bit of software uh, to send you notifications when something's done for instance your dishwasher uh, tumble dryer washing machine okay let's get to it hey there everybody my name is John. If you're new to Hascasts, then we cover things like uh, tips, tricks, tutorials, and uh, general product reviews for home automation items. Uh, so if you are new here, then why not consider subscribing? It will be an honor if you join me on this journey. So this is just a quick heads up. If at any time you want to check out the HS110 or anything else that I mention, I've put links to everything in the video description below. Uh, now, full disclosure, if you click on the links, they are affiliate links, I get about 4-5% uh, commission on the purchase price, but you don't pay any extra. It will go to uh, helping me get some better equipment to record videos, as this is my 13th full take of this video. Uh, so, right, let's get on with it. Right, so let's talk a little bit about the, the setup of the HS110. Uh, right, so, so to set this up, uh, you first need to uh, download the TP-Link CASA app, K-A-S-A, -A, and that is available for Android, iOS, I'm not sure about Windows Phone or any other systems, uh, but the two main ones, yeah, you're good to go. So just download it, uh, plug this in, there's a button on the front, once you plug it in, it will have a... Uh, it has a Wi-Fi light on it. Uh, if you keep that button pressed in for about five seconds, the Wi-Fi light turns amber. Uh, you can then start up your app and it will find the plug. You enter your Wi-Fi details, it sends them over to this. And then that is it. You're all set to go. If any time you need to reset it, there's a button on the top. Press it and start from the beginning. Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty. Uh, let's talk about the, the pros of owning the TP-Link HS110. Um, right, well the first pro is price. How much is this? Well, in the UK you're looking uh, between anywhere between £25 and £35. Pounds. Um, in the US and the EU you're looking at $30, uh, €30 Euros respectively. Uh, round about ballpark figures. Uh, now... The reason that is a pro is when you consider the HS110 alongside a system where, say, you need a hub, like the uh, Samsung SmartThings system or the Hive system, or even uh, somewhere where you need a, a USB stick, such as the, the Z-Wave, uh, the Z-Wave system, you don't need to buy that. All you need to buy is this switch, and then it connects to your Wi-Fi. Okay, so the next pro is connectivity. When you think about it, you don't need to uh, go through the hassle of connecting this to a different system. Uh, you don't need to learn it, especially if you're just buying a hub so that you can uh, use a smart switch. That in itself is not smart, in my opinion, unless, of course, you're looking at uh, expanding your system. So, this is just setting up a simple Wi-Fi device. Um, most people can do that. If you're looking to get into home automation, then it's something that you probably uh, can do already. The next pro is reliability. Now this particular HS110, I've had for uh, around about two years plus, and it has never let me down. It's never failed me. Uh, I must admit, I'm the first one to admit that when it comes to my own gadgets, my own electronics, I'm not the most gentlest of people. Sometimes they do get thrown around. Um, why? I don't know. Again, this has stood up to everything that I've thrown at it. I'm not saying that you should be kicking it around the floor with steel toe capped boots. Um, I'm saying treat it with respect. And as you can hear, there's a bit of a bit of a rattle in there but this is plastic and for a piece of plastic this for a piece of plastic this is well built sturdy okay right so we've done the pros now let's talk about the cons 
of owning this item? Uh, well, so the first con is connectivity. Yes, yes, I did say that connectivity was the first pro. I'm also saying that it's the first con. Why is that? Well, when you think about it, this is a Wi-Fi device, and that means that it is battling for a space on an already uh, crowded Wi-Fi network that we uh, that we quite often have. When you think about it, you've got all the electronic devices, all the uh, all the smart home things that run on Wi-Fi, all your phones, tablets, um, TVs, consoles, printers, everything is all vying for that same uh, mesh of signal range and quite often it can get very um, what's the word quite often it can get very congested so if you do have uh, a lot of Wi-Fi devices then if you're noticing that your system is slow it may be that uh, you do have too many devices I myself I've got loads of Wi-Fi devices connected to my network um, I believe there's 65 plus uh, things connected to my um, Wi-Fi network at the minute and the system is uh, the system is fine this certainly doesn't slow it down however it's just something for you to be aware of um, now along with that I am I am aware that uh, there are a few uh, sort of router manufacturers out there that actually limit the amount of Wi-Fi items that you can have connected to your router. Admittedly I have never come across one and I believe they are very few and far between uh, but if you do have hundreds then it is something to uh, be aware of. So the next con is price. Yes, price. You did hear, hear me right. You did hear me right. I did say price was the second pro. That's why I'm saying it as the second con. Why? Well, look at it this way. Um, yes, it is cheaper than buying a hub and a switch just so that you can use a smart switch. However, if you are technically minded and you don't mind, say, flashing the board of a son of POW, however you want to pronounce it or say it, it's a lot dearer than that you're looking at twice the amount of money you can pick up a, a son of pow uh for maybe 15 uh dollars pounds euros shingles whatever uh, but if you are not technically minded and i would say if you have children or pets and go with this uh, I'm not a big fan of Sonoffs. I have uh, around about 20 of them, and they're in. They're mostly uh, Sonoff Basics with a few variants uh, thrown in. And I, I was a big fan of them to begin with until my son and pets nearly got electrocuted, um, just through a simple act they're just not sturdy in order to make them sturdy you may as well fork out for a decent smart uh, switch instead of a son off my opinion as always and the last con that i'm going to talk about could also be classed as a pro as well um, in the uk at least the tp link hs110 is discontinued apparently uh, i found this out by uh, looking for, I found this out when I was looking for the uh, the one one zero on Amazon, so that I could post my affiliate links in the description below. Um, but I found that every Amazon country that I searched, I could find it, apart from the UK. Uh, so I contacted uh, TP Link, and they said, "Yeah, it has been discontinued." However. I then got onto eBay and did a quick search on eBay and I found uh, the right model HS110 uh, for the right price, £35. Sometimes I found brand new models less. Um, 
bear in mind that just because it's been discontinued, at least here in the UK, the service isn't going to stop. The unit isn't going to stop functioning. So I've, I've had two years good use out of this and I expect another two years good use out of this. So you weigh it up. The reason I say it's a pro as well is, well, think about it. If it's discontinued, people are going to be wanting to get rid of their stocks to get uh, the next new switching. So that means that people could be lowering their prices. You may be able to pick it up for less. I have to look around. However, if you do click in the links in the description below, most of the countries will go to their respective Amazon store uh, or the nearest Amazon store to them. In the UK, uh, you will probably be taken to ebay.co.uk with the search results for the HS110. I've saved you the trouble. It's the kind of guy I am. Right, so all that is done. Next, we're going to talk about plugins. What plugins are there available for uh, the HS110? Well, to begin with, we'll start with the home assistants. Uh, we'll start with the voice assistants, let's call them. Uh, so you've got the Amazon Echo, the Google Home, I believe, and also coming up uh, in the future, Facebook's. Top tip if you didn't know about it. Right, so which ones of those are supported? I know the Amazon Echo has got a dedicated skill, a TP-Link skill, and that will allow you to say, Echo, turn tumble dryer on. And Bob's your uncle. So that's that. Next one is a home assistant. For those of you that have been watching me for uh, for a while, for all of my last seven or eight videos maybe, this video is primarily dedicated to the Home Assistant platform uh, stroke framework of home automation. And that in itself is made up of components uh, that link, that integrate with third party uh, items. There is a dedicated uh, TP-Link switch component that will allow you just to enter the IP address of this. You get that. You can get that from the uh, the settings in your phone app. Enter the switch. Give it a name. Bob's your uncle. Fanny's your aunt. It works. Presto. Right. Uh, the last one that I'm going to talk about is Node Red. If you have followed me, then you will. Then you may be aware that I'm a big fan of Node Red. Uh, if you haven't got Node Red installed, then I will put links in the video description above. Uh, to my playlist on Node Red, including how to install Node Red on a few different systems. So, when you go into Node Red, um, there is a dedica dedicated, in fact, I believe there are two or three dedicated uh, TP Link CASA modules. You can import those, and once you drag them into your floor, it will give you a live update underneath the Node of how much energy it is uh, using, so how many watts it's using, how many amps it's drawing, and what voltage it has available. Right, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give you a, a quick brief description on how I get this and the software to notify me when something's done. Now all these instructions I'll put in the description below, uh, so if you're interested just uh, take a look at any time. So we need to know uh, for variables, we need to know how many watts the item that you're using, the item that you want to monitor, uses. Uh, for the case of my tumble dryer, I set it at 100 watts. How often do you want to check whether it is active or not? If it's something that uh, goes on for a while, say a tumble dryer or washing machine, you can have a, a bit of an extended period, say every 15 minutes. So I've got mine set to every 15 minutes. Once it is active, how long do you want it to continue checking? I have mine set to two minutes. And once it's finished, how do you want to be notified? Uh, you can get these from your uh, Home Assistant uh, system. Find out what notifications you've got. Install any that you want that you don't already have. They're the ones. 
Right, so, briefly, we have the appliance plugged in. It asks how much energy are you using? I'm not using much, I'm on standby. I'm using three watts. Okay, so that's not active. I'll check again in 15 minutes. 15 minutes passes, we'll check again. How much energy are you using? I'm using 372 watts. Ah, so you've been turned on. Okay, so now we'll reduce that from 15 minutes and we'll reduce it to two minutes. Every two minutes, I'm gonna check with you. So after it's 15th check, uh, so what's that, 30 minutes? It says, how much energy are you using? I'm using 72 watts. So, right, so you're using less than 100 watts. Have you finished? Question mark. Ding, or in your case, ding. So, have you finished? Now then, in the case of my tumble dryer, it spins, 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 it stops spinning. Then it starts spinning the other way. I believe it's to stop the claws from becoming greased. I said yes. Um, however, what happens if it does ask the tumble dryer how much energy it's using just in the midst of that stop? So to counteract anything such as that on any appliance that you monitor, um, I've put in another uh, two minutes. So I'll ask you again in two minutes just to make sure. In two minutes, it asks again, how much energy are you, you, you using? I'm using three watts. Right, okay, so you've finished. Uh, so now I look at the fourth variable. What notifications do you want? I fire them off. And in my case, I get a text message on my phone saying, hey, John, sorry to disturb you, but the tumble dryer has finished. Does that sound like it would be useful to you? If it does, let me know in the comments below. Um, is there any alterations that you would make to that? Do you own one of these? Uh, or do you own a similar uh, smart socket that, uh, that lets you know the power? So let me know what you think in the comments below to any of those questions, or if you've got any questions of your own that you want to ask me, let me know in the comments below. So thanks for watching. Like I said, if you're new to Hascasts, why not consider subscribing? If you subscribe already, then why not ring the bell in that notification bar? And that will make sure that uh, you're notified when my next videos come out. And if you want to watch another video from Hascasts, then just click on the thumbnail next to me. Uh, okay, thanks a lot. Love you all. Peace out.